Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where we learn to be a better programmer, and this is part three of our Learn the Mern Stack video tutorial. Uh, last, in the last video, we set up our web server using Express.js and Node.js, and in this video, we're actually going to set up our database. So we're going to use MongoDB Atlas as our cloud database provider, and then what we're also going to do is we're going to set up our database schema for our notes and as well as our users. Um, so if you want to go back to the previous video where we set up our web server, you can find that video here. But if you want to just follow along in this video, feel free to uh, clone the repo linked here as well. And then you'll be able to just, it'll give you all the code from the previous video, and then you can actually just build on top of that, okay? So uh, before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button and, so you don't miss out on future videos. Hey everyone, so in this video, we're gonna set up our cloud database using MongoDB Atlas. And then we're also going to set up our database schema uh, for our server using Mongoose, which is a wrapper for the Node.js MongoDB API. All right, so uh, this is the register page, which you're going to need to register. And then you're also going to need to create a free account and provision your, uh, um, your database on a, on a, in a region. But there's definitely there's a free tier, and you'll be able to do everything in this tutorial with the free tier. So I'm going to skip all that. Um, but uh, there's some configuration that you're going to need to do for your database on the MongoDB uh, website to make sure that you can actually access your database uh, and so on. All right, so I'm just going to skip to that. Okay, so here I am in my dashboard for my project. Um, and MongoDB Atlas gives you a ton of different things that you can look at. And so there's a, there's a lot of ways you can get overwhelmed with all, with all this. But what I really wanted to show you was we're going to need a few things. So we're going to need uh, the connect URL. So they give you a way um, to connect using uh, MongoDB's like API and all that stuff. So what we need is an actual, um, this actual address with our database name inside of it. So we're gonna select the driver of Node.js, but they also have Python, Ruby, Scala, and so on, as many languages as you're interested in. And then you pick the Node version, and then you uh, copy this link, which is what we're gonna need later, all right? So that's one, that's part one. So in our network access tab, we actually need to allow uh, our server to connect to this database. And the way you do that is using what's called an IP whitelist or allow list. Um, and so typically what you can do is you can just add your computer's specific IP address uh, and that will allow connections. But what I just have done um, just right now, is just given it 0, 0.0.0.0 slash .0, 0, which basically means that all IP addresses can connect to the database, which isn't isn't actually very uh, secure. Um, so you wouldn't necessarily want to deploy this into production, but it's good for testing purposes. All right. OK, so that's all you need to do to configure your database to work uh, initially. And now we're going to jump over into VS Code, where we're going to um, start working on our database schema. OK, everyone, so here I am in VS Code. And so we're going to set up our models. All right, so I've started, I've created a new branch called tutorial part three. So if you're just joining us in part three, you can clone the repo uh, at, and check out, get checkout uh, branch or get checkout tutorial uh, part two. And then you can follow along uh, from that branch in this tutorial. Um, if you just want the code, you can just clone this. Uh, branch directly and check out this branch directly. All right. So now, uh, so we're going to use what's called Mongoose, which is a uh, an API wrapper for the MongoDB Node.js API. All right. So I'm just going to run npm install Mongoose. Okay. So it's installed. And now I'm just going to clear our terminal and we don't need the terminal for right now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder under server and I'm going to call it models. And then inside of models, I'm going to create a new file, and I'm going to call it user.js. All right. And now I'm just going to pull in mongoose. Pull it require mongoose. Like this. And then I'm going to say const schema is equal to mongoose.schema. Okay. And const user schema is equal to new schema. And I'm going to say username, Oops. username, and then the type is going to be a string. Required is going to be true, and unique 
this is going to be true because we don't want to have duplicate usernames. And then I'm going to have another field called password hash. And then this is going to be a string, type string. And then uh, required is also true. Right? So the password hash is just a, a hash representation of the user's password. Um, and so that's going to help us avoid storing uh, rich uh, plain text passwords, the actual password in our database. So, and then I'm going to add another field called num notes, and this is going to be a number like that. All right. So this is the schema that we're going to use for a simple user. It's just going to have a username, a hashed password, and then the number of notes that belong to that user. Okay. So we're going to say module.exports is equal to user is equal to mongoose.model and then user like that and then user schema. Awesome. So this every time we get use this user object, it's going to be writing to our mongoose database. Okay. So now I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it note.js. All right. So inside of note, it's going to be very similar to user at the top here. I'm just going to copy that and paste it in. And now I'm going to say const note schema. It's going to be equal to new schema. And then inside of this, we're going to have a title. And this is going to be a string. And then body is going to be an object. And then author is going to be a string, uh, video link is going to be a string, and then video timestamp is going to be a number, and uh, date is going to be uh, a type date, and the default value is date.now, all right? And I believe that's it. So actually, we actually just want to throw in an extra field and we're going to say timestamps and set that equal to true. So every time this node is updated, we'll have the ability to access that updated at value and it will, um, uh, uh, we'll be able to use that when we update our table of notes for a particular user. All right, so now I'm just going to export it. So I'm saying module that exports is equal to note is equal to mongoose model of note and then note schema. All right, so we just set up a very simple uh, mongoose schema for not only notes, but also users. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to jump over to our server code, and then we actually just need to connect to our database. All right, so you're going to end up using, so I'm actually going to get rid of this for now. Uh, because we don't really need it. And uh, we need to do a, a few things. So we need to pull in mongoose into our server.js. So I'm going to say const mongoose is equal to require mongoose, like that. And now down here, what we're going to do is we're going to say const db path is equal to, and this is where you're going to paste in your uh, the path that you got from MongoDB. So paste in path from MongoDB. All right. And uh, so now what you're going to do is you're going to say mongoose.connect. And then you're going to pass in the DB path. Uh, whoops. DB path like this. And I'll get rid of this actually because we don't need that. Um, and we're also going to pass in some parameters. So inside, we're going to say db name is going to be unote and use new URL parser is set to true and use create index is set to true and use unified topology is set to true as well. All right. And then uh, we're just going to have that returns promise. And then inside of here, we're going to have a callback. And we're going to say console.log connected to the DB. And then otherwise, we catch and catch the error. 
and then we say console.log error uh, connecting to the database like this. Um, all right. And so that's all we need to do. So what, what, what we'll end up having is both of these. So connecting to the da database is an asynchronous uh, task. So what will happen is our server will start up. And then we'll see either a connected to DB or an error connected to DB printed to our console. All right. So um, one thing we also want to do is I want to just add a very simple route that will allow us to uh, create a brand new note. All right. So I'm going to say app dot uh, post, and it's just going to be a, a slash post route, and we're going to say res like this, and um, I'm going to say uh, const uh, title. So I'm just going to um, unpack the this from the body. So I'm going to say title author body and um, that's it. That's all I'm going to do just because just to make it simple. And then I'm just going to pull that from rec.body. And then I'm just going to say uh, const new note is equal to or I'm sorry, let new note uh, equal to um, new note. Um, and inside of here, the constructor, is, or yeah, the constructor is we're just going to say, um, actually, it needs to be an object, and it's going to say title, author, and body, like that. And then I'm going to say new note dot save, and then dot then. So the, the the callback returns a note. And inside of this, I'm just going to say uh, console.log note saved and res.json note like that. And then we say catch and then error. And then we're just going to say console.log error um, saving the note. And we also want to send, we actually, we actually want to make this a callback or, or send a response back to the, uh, to the client. So we're just going to say uh, res.send error. Simple. Just keep it very simple. All right. And like that. And that's all we need to do. So we just created a simple post route for our application. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in my DB path and then we're going to test it out. Okay, so I pasted in my path, and now I'm just going to say npm or sorry, node server.js, and we see that we're listening on port 8080, and we're also connected to the database. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to test out our post route. So I'm going to open up Postman, and we're going to send a dummy note. Okay, so here we are in Postman. So I'm going to create a new URL, and it's going to be a post route to localhost 8080. And we're going to say body is going to be raw. And it's not going to be text, it's going to be JSON. So in the body, we're going to say title. Uh, oops, title. Um, my first note, like this. And author is going to be me and then the body is an object so we're just going to say text is okay. uh, text and body text all right so we're just going to send this and we should get a response back all right so we see down here we have an id a title an author a body body text, a date created at and updated at. So this is basically a verification that this note does exist in the database. Now let's verify this in the cloud. So if we scroll down all the way to the bottom, we see that we have some 
notes here. So we have my first note, Gerard, and then body is the body text. All right. So we can verify that not only is our post route working, but we can also verify that this we are sending the information to the database. All right. So and we see that a nice console log statement was saying that the note was saved. OK, so what we did in this video is we created our models, our note model and our user model. And we use the note model to write to our database. Um, and we also use Mongoose to connect to our database as well. All right. So if you like the video, please feel free to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next part.